Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Hey everybody. It's Brock. This is Brock. And we got a new episode with another episode of All About. Of All About. All About. What's up everybody? It's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we're learning about a very cool goby. These are called Court Jester Gobies. Or as other people like to call them, the Rainford Gobies. Or in other words, the Old Glory. So prices on them, you normally shouldn't spend too much. They start out at about $18 when they're small. You get up to about $24 if they're a little bit bigger. Tank size, these are really good fish to put in nano cubes. People that do those little nano tanks with reefs in them, they always try to put these in there because they're very good in small tanks. They can be as little as a 10 gallon. So they can definitely do well in your tank. Care level, they are moderate. The main reason why is because they're very finicky eaters but they do captive breed them now and so if you can try to get a captive bred one and it'll make life a lot easier on you you'll be taking care of a super easy fish rather than taking care of one that might not eat tipper they are all super peaceful they are actually pretty shy and timid they are pretty frightened by like anything so you'll definitely see them run back inside the rock to hide a lot of the times Reef safe, yes, they are a great reef fish. That's pretty much the best kind of tank to put them in. That's what they're used to in their environment. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.020 to 1.025. Everything's basic there. Max size is about 3 inches. Colors on them, a lot of times they either have a really white body or a light blue body with these really pretty orange stripes running all the way down them. Diet, they are an omnivore. Most of the time, whenever you have trouble getting them to eat, brine and mysis shrimp is what people have the best luck with. Pellets are another one to really try. And then flake food is probably like your last thing they would probably eat. But getting, like I said, getting a captive bred one, they're a lot more used to eating. If anything, ask your shop that you're buying it from or if you're buying it online, ask them what they're feeding them and it'll really help you out. I've also heard that they will eat algae, hair algae, and even I saw reports of them eating cyanobacteria, so they must be big on cleaning up the tank. Origin, they do come from Indonesia, or they of course are captive bred. Compatibility, just ask. You can keep multiple in a tank, you just have to make sure it's big enough, because a lot of times if you have more than one in a tank, they will get territorial over their space. So just make sure you have a big enough tank for them to all kind of find their spot. Now, of course, they are captive bred. So everyone thinks, hey, can you breed them? They can breed in your tank. There's no way of telling if they're a male or female based on their body. You know, you can't really, there's no markings on them that you'll be able to tell. But they can change from male to female. So either way, if they do want to breed, they can do it on their own. While they can breed, it's very rare that you'll ever see them actually grow up and actually be adults because whenever they hatch, they have to be able to eat microorganisms, which can be very hard to maintain in your tank. So most of the time you'll see the little bitty fry running around and then they really don't last much longer than that. Make sure you give them plenty of hiding places, have a really nice rock structure for them to go back under because they will pretty much get scared by stuff just flying by you walking up to the tank anything like that will definitely make them dart back make sure you don't put these guys with any aggressive fish a lot of times they can be bullied and they are not one to stick up for themselves so make sure you put them with other peaceful fish they are gobies so they are going to sift sand they might even spit sand on your corals that are low lying in your tank so don't freak out if he's doing that just kind of wash it off of the corals you'll have to just watch them I think that pretty much hits on everything we need to know about the Court Jester Gobi. They are a lot hardier if you do get the captive bred ones, so I would definitely look around and see if you can make sure you get a captive bred one and you won't have to worry about them not eating. But other than that, hope you all have a good day. Make sure to like and subscribe. Ask me any comments down below or send me some messages on social media, whatever you got to do to get the questions out there. I'll be answering them. Hope you all have a good day and I will see you all later.